Are you hard stock champ free? Huh? You simply cannot push your way through to becoming grand champion. If this is you, stay tuned for this video because today I'll be showing you guys why this is the case and how you can improve your gameplay to reach that sweet grand champion spot. Let's get started. There will be three sections to this video. Section 1 will be identifying your errors. Section 2 is the difference between a champ free player and a grand champ player. Section 3 will be analyzing my pre-recorded gameplay and breaking it down with you guys. So let's get started with section 1, identifying your errors. Alright, this is a replay from 2020, I was around champ 3. Um, so yeah, let's watch. So here, my teammate is getting the ball, he already gave away possession. I get the ball and I've given away possession already. Now this is a common mistake a lot of people do. Giving away possession. Now. There were so many different scenarios and so many different things I could have done there. Instead of taking a touch, I could have smashed it against the wall. So my teammate is ready to get it again. Uh, th that's also a risk because his teammate, as you can see behind the ball, is also ready to go. But it would be a lot better because, as you can see, the guy I've challenged with, he's already there. And I think I was going for boost, so that's why I've done that. I'm not quite sure <laughs> why I've done that. But let's carry on watching and see what we do next. So the opponent actually gives away possession here as well, which is quite strange. Teammate tries, I think, pass to me. That was my fault. I tried demoing the other guy, but it just didn't work. And um, here again, I'm just giving away possession. Just giving away possession. Why, why have I done that? This shot here wasn't too bad, as I had no other options. Teammate passes to me, but he also goes, leading us to double commit and concede a goal. That was really bad for my teammate. He should have anticipated me being there. Here again, overcommitting. I know I couldn't get that, but I still went for it. I should have analyzed the situation to see what he was going to do first, and then do that. Teammate here again, giving away possession for no reason. I'm not even there. He knew I was backwards, but he still did that. So here, they're shooting. Teammate saves it. Uh, I see the other guy going. I'm not in the right position to save it. I'm going backwards for some reason. Teammate tries to clear it, and then I clear it. Uh, it's not looking very good. Here I do a clearance as I had no other options. And here I'm actually gonna pause it. So the reason I've paused it here is because look how close the opponent is to the ball compared to my teammate. If my teammate goes now, even if he goes now, he is bound to miss because the opponent will just go above him, side of him, any direction. Teammate will not be ready to save that at all. He could get lucky and anticipate where the opponent may hit it, but 9 out of 10 times you should not go for the challenge here. Um, and you should probably wait, you should probably wait if you're in a good position, wait and see what happens. That's the best thing you can do. So as you saw there, my teammate went the same time as the opponent hit the ball, which is not a good thing to do. So at the moment, a lot of impulsive decisions have been made by me and my teammate. So my teammate was going for a lot of solo plays, which is not bad all the time, as long as you can execute it properly. And here, I just have a really bad touch. Again, just giving away possession. This is really bad to do um, as they push forward. And here, everyone misses. So right there, I should have been boosting towards the ball as I saw the opponent also go for it. I had boost, but I just decided not to go quicker to it. I'm not sure why, but it's a very dumb move for me. And here just unlucky again just really bad challenges and i'm sure you guys understand the gist of this whole game so i'm not gonna show too much anymore it's just really bad challenges really bad positioning and just no communication with my teammate really all right the final thing i'll show from this clip is here i should have smashed it i just take a touch why have i done that very dumb i could have potentially scored here not too bad teammate went for it as well and we both double commit so that's basically the whole of that clip we just forfeit as we have no more time and they're clearly time wasting so we can finally just conclude all of our errors we have made this game so here are all of the mistakes me and my teammate made in that clip the biggest thing i noticed from myself was giving away a lot of possession teammate doing the same thing um, a lot of over commitment um, early challenging very bad positioning for myself um, no chemistry at all with my teammate not anticipating what he's going to do, not him anticipating what I'm going to do. And zero passes. Passes are so important. It's an easy free goal if you pass correctly. But again, 
they all link together. If you don't have good positioning, you can't pass. If there's no chemistry with your teammate, you're both going to challenge at the same time, which leads to overcommitment and double commitment. And um, giving away possession is just not thinking it through ahead of time. So you have to really think out what you want to do and make that decision quicker so you and your teammate can score. So these are common mistakes I feel like champ threes make, but also lower ranked people. The biggest issue with people is they don't want to accept their mistakes. Ego plays a huge role in this game, especially when you're in the heat of the moment. You're playing with your teammate, you're very quick to blame your teammate. And as you saw here, a lot of problems were from my side and I'm happy to accept that because I'm watching this back and I can see what mistake I'm doing and I'm watching it back in a later time. Whereas in the game, maybe I, I might have not been thinking it was my fault. So sometimes you just have to watch back your gameplay, be unbiased with yourself because the only way you're going to improve is if you're harsh on yourself and see what you're really doing. That's not to say it was 100% my fault. As you saw, my teammate was also just going for a lot of solo plays. Again, nothing wrong with that. But if you can't execute it, don't go for it. Zero passes, no really, not much chemistry from both of us. Just a really bad game, but a lot of improvement to be made and can be made. So let's head over to section two. What's the difference between a champ three player and a GC player? But if you guys are enjoying the video so far, please leave a like. This video took so long to make and I'm trying something new. So please subscribe if you're new here. Smash the like button and leave a comment. What rank are you currently? And how long have you been playing the game? And what's your favorite car? Okay, you don't have to answer one, huh? you just comment one. All right, let's move over to section two. So the top things that make the difference between a Grand Champ player and a Champ 3 player is passing, like you see here. This list is in no order, they're all quite important. Um, analyzing the situation, choosing when to challenge, recoveries, boost management, power shots, and playing threes. So I'm briefly just going to talk about all of them. Passing is one of the best things you can do and Champries, the reason I didn't mention something like rotation is because they have rotation. They are in the rotation but they choose not to pass most times from my experience. Passing will always guarantee you a goal 80% of the time if it's done correctly. Which also links to my other point with power shots. If you have good power shots, you're able to make great passes with power and you're able to score with great power as well. Choosing when to challenge and also analyzing the situation kind of link into one because if you choose to challenge early, your analyzation of the situation is quite bad because you've challenged early. You need to see how far your opponent is. If they're closer to the ball, then they should, you should anticipate that they will be going for it and they will reach it way before you do. So be patient and analyze the situation. Boost management and recoveries also kind of go into one. Boost management is something I still sometimes have an issue with. But there's a lot of times where you don't really need a full boost. You can just pick up a couple of pads, you can stay in the play instead of going back and actually make a play. And in the third section of this video, you'll see that I've made a couple of plays without using boost. I just had like one or two pads. And this also links with recovery because being able to keep your momentum when you're recovering without boost, being able to power slide and keep the momentum going really does help out uh, just getting back faster and also getting into the play faster with like wave dashing and stuff like that and finally my last tip is playing threes this is just in my opinion but i feel like playing threes helps with the pace of the game it's always very fast so it helps with your decision making and every other point i made it just helps you improve with that and give it a go and you'll see if you're if you're a regular twos player when you go back to twos it will be like a such a breeze so that's what i would say is all the differences and grand champ players they're usually just a lot more consistent with hitting the ball and decision making it won't mean you're gonna 100 percent hit every single shot but you're definitely a lot more consistent uh, with power shots and stuff like that and this clip as well teammate misses scores that's just very unfortunate and that's again goes back to consistency so make sure you're not missing the ball make sure you're hitting the ball hard and this game here we're down 3-0 and we make a comeback so we can actually see and analyze what we've done to uh, make this comeback i'll be honest with this game my teammate really has not done too much but we get the first goal by them both over committing so that's the first goal second goal was also very similar our position slash early challenging or challenging too late i should say and this one with while same with the pass pass to him he passes back he challenges and i get past him 
easy goal most of the times. So here in OT, double commitment, teammates there, he shoots, we score, and we make a comeback from 3-0 down to 4-3. So now we can move over to the final section, section 3, analyzing my own footage. I know we've been analyzing footage together, but this is actually analyzing where I am now. This was a game from yesterday, and I will show you guys how and what I've done and talk my way through how we've managed to dominate a GC lobby. So here, as you can see, I passed the ball off the corner wall and my teammate was ready and he scores. Um, I'll be changing through the clips because I have multiple different gameplays from recent times and I don't want to make this video too long, it's already 10 minutes, so we'll get past this last play here. I'll try pass, try get 50. Teammate's there, he does. Uh, I don't know if that was an <laughs> intentional fake, but it worked almost. Here I have no boost, this was I was talking about earlier. Still staying in the play. I clamped the guy and teammates ready. Beautiful positional shot in the bottom right corner. And that's a goal for us. Um, did that with no boost. And I made sure to stay in the play. I could have easily left and gave them possession. But why waste it when we have an opportunity to score and we do score. So here's another clip from that day. We start the game off. Uh, that was pretty bad. Teammate luckily saves it. I get a touch the guy wasn't expecting me to do. Uh, okay, I have to go for boost ticks, not much I can do to have possession, see what this guy is doing, team goes for it, I'm going, I challenged just in time, uh, as you saw the guy challenged a bit late, and we get our first goal. So here they have possession, he shoots, I'm being patient, I wasn't sure if teammate was going to go for it, so I just made sure I also went, um, so we had pretty good stuff there, I'm being patient again, try to get the boost, he takes it get a demo and wait for my teammate to pass to me. He didn't have boost, but he still managed to take it forward. Here, I'm reacting quickly and I make the shot and we get our second goal. So here, the kickoff starts again. I'm reacting quickly, the other guy commits, he misses. Uh, I try to push it forward, make sure my teammate's going. See if this boost spawns, luckily it does. See, I'm not gonna be in good position, so I'm going back. Um, here my teammate hits off the wall, he can hit it again to me, but then the guy came this way. Again, I'm challenging on time. Here I try to go for a solo play, I try to get a flip reset, uh, which almost worked, but I ran out of boost. And um, teammate here, no boost, can still make a play, can fake them. <laughs> With no boost, luckily he goes in, and I believe they forfeit. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as you can see, with no boost, you can still fake GCs. Uh, anyone can get faked, I get faked as well. So that's the end of the video guys, as you see they forfeit, we win. And I really hope this video was beneficial to you guys and getting to GC is it's tough but once you get to a certain level you understand and see how even GCs make mistakes, these minor mistakes and being able to capitalize on those mistakes will really help you out. You know, I've gone beyond that point of GC1, Champ 3, I'm GC2 now, I'm hoping to get GC3 and SSL soon. At that stage, it's just all about consistency and mechanics do really come in clutch uh, once you're at that level. So yeah, I really hope this video was useful to you guys. Please comment if you've enjoyed. Let me know what other type of videos you guys want to see. And, you know, I I've tried something new. I really hope you guys do enjoy it. Please like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And peace.